Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this short podcast, we are going to show you how to prepare the statement of cash flows using the direct method. We will take you through each step and explain where the information is extracted from and how to use that information. Why are statements of cash flow important? Cash flow statements can help managers and investors. Managers need to know whether the company can meet its short-term financial obligations. In other words, whether it can pay its bills when they become due. Managers and investors want to know if the company is generating sufficient cash. And investors want to know whether the company is likely to pay cash dividends. To prepare the cash flow statements, we divide or group the cash activities, inflow and outflow of cash, into three areas of activity. These are operating activities, investing activities and financing activities. Operating activities include cash received from sales as interest and any dividend income. The cash outflows include purchases, expenses, any taxes paid and interest paid on loans. Cash inflows from investing activities include sales of plant, property and equipment and any sale of land. Cash outflows for investment include cash paid to buy land, property, plant, equipment or other businesses. Cash inflows from financing activities include sale of bonds, inflows from a line of credit and cash generated by the issue of common stock. Cash outflows include cash paid out as dividends, and cash used to retire long-term debt. There are two methods for preparation of a cash flow statement known as the direct and indirect methods. This podcast will look at preparation using the direct method. Whichever method is used it is important to remember that the answers for inflow or outflow for the different activities will be the same. In a further podcast we shall prepare a cash flow statement using the indirect method to show this is true. Let us work through an example, starting with statements from the Barbar Woolen Company, which manufactures a number of woolen garments. Here the income statement is shown. We shall need the balance sheets for the last two years because we are going to use information which is calculated using the starting and ending balances in a number of accounts. We begin with the cash flows from the operating activities of Barbar Woolens. Listed are the cash flows that we require, starting with the cash receipts from customers. If we take the figure from accounts receivable at the start, add the sales made, then subtract the balance in accounts receivable at the end, then we should have a figure for the cash collected during the year from customers. The receivables figures come from the balance sheets. The sales figure can be obtained from the income statement. We have highlighted the figure here. We now calculate the cash collected. Add sales to receivables at the start and then subtract the receivables figure for the end of the year. This gives us a figure of $624,800 for cash receipts for purchases. To determine the cash paid for purchases, we need to go through a two-stage process. We need to consider the changes in inventory over the course of the year. And we need the figure for the cost of goods sold. We take the inventory at the start and add the cost of goods sold, then subtract the inventory figure at the end of the year. The result will be the cost of purchases. Now that we have a figure for the cost of purchases, we take the accounts payable figure at the start, add the figure for cost of purchases, then subtract the accounts payable for the end of the year. This will give us a figure for the cash paid for purchases. Giving a figure of $438,900 for cash payments. To determine the cash payment on prepaid insurance, we need figures for prepayments from the balance sheets for the two years. We then add the insurance expense to the prepayment figure at the start of the year, subtract the prepayment figure for the end of the year, and we have the cash paid for insurance. 
which gives a figure of $15,700 paid for insurance. To determine the cash paid for wages, we need the figure from the income statement. And from the balance sheets, the figures for accrued wages at the start and end of the year. Take the figure for accrued wages at the start of the year, add the wages expense, then subtract the accrued wages at the end of the year, and we have the cash paid for wages. This gives a figure of $44,400 as the cash payment for wages. To determine cash paid for taxes, we need the taxes payable figure for the start and the end of the year from the balance sheets and the figure for taxes from the income statement. Take the figure for taxes payable at the start of the year, add the tax expense, then subtract the taxes payable at the end of the year, and we have a figure for cash payments for taxes. This gives us a figure of $25,625 for the cash payment for taxes. To determine the cash payment for interest, we take the figure for the interest expense from the income statement. This gives a figure of $16,000 as a cash payment for interest. To obtain the figure for the net cash from operating activities, we take the cash receipts and subtract all of the cash payments, leaving a figure of $84,175. The notes to the accounts tell us a loom was sold during the year. The original cost of the loom was $10,000. We can determine the accumulated depreciation that related to this sale. The difference between the accumulated depreciation at the start and end of the year can be obtained from the balance sheet and the depreciation expense from the income statement. The difference between start and end of year is determined Subtract the depreciation expense and we have a figure for accumulated depreciation relating to the sale. We know from the income statement that there was a loss on the sale of the loom of $2,500. We now have sufficient information to determine the cash received for the sale of the loom. The original cost of the loom was $10,000. If the accumulated depreciation was $2,000, then the loom had a book value of $8,000. Subtract the loss on sale from this figure, then we know the cash received for the machine was $5,500. This gives us our first figure for the cash received from investing activities. To determine the value of equipment purchased, we take the value for the equipment at the start of the year, subtract the value for the sale of the loom, and then subtract this from the value at the end of the year. This will give us the figure for the cash paid for equipment purchased. This gives us a figure of 36000 for the purchase of equipment. The sale of equipment less the purchase of equipment gives a figure of 30500 as a cash outflow for investing activities. Finally, we look at financing activity. The balance sheet tells us that long-term debt was reduced from $100,000 to $60,000. So a reduction of long-term debt of $40,000 was made as a financing activity during the year. To determine dividends paid, we look at the change in retained earnings at the start and end of the year. Subtract this from the net income and the remainder is the cash payment made as a dividend. We now have a figure of $91,375 for financing activities. This is a cash outflow. The three sections can now be combined to give a cash flow statement. There is an inflow of cash from operating activity and we subtract the two outflows the net result is a decrease in cash of $37,700 during the year. We can carry out a simple check here. The difference of $37,700 must represent the change in the current assets of cash during the year. From the balance sheet, we see that there has been a decrease in cash, 
subtract $20,300 from $58,000, and we have a figure of $37,700, which agrees to the cash flow statement. This ends our podcast on preparation of a cash flow statement by the direct method, brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.